Okay, so welcome I'm, to yeah, go ahead. No, doctor, I am just uh, muting myself. That's what I was. Okay, I just put it. Trying to say. All right, thank you. Um, so welcome to the fifteenth May, twenty fifteen IMR. Uh, it's been a really fantastic or a very terrible week, depending on uh, how it hit you or how it made a lot of money for you. There has been, you know, multi hundred point uh, volatility on the Nifty, not on the Sensex. And some days up, some days down, and even on an intraday basis, opens 80, 90 points up. In an hour or two, it's down to uh, you know, by 100, 110 points, and then again it rises up again. So all sorts of uh, things happening. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people wondering what the hell is going on. Uh, in the last week's IMR, we talked about how the market uh, seems to have been split between some really good buying opportunities versus some really good selling opportunities. I don't know. I'm just guessing, and we review it today that. Uh, Perhaps some of those stocks we said that are long went up versus those that we said which are short went down and um, this happened on different days. So there's been uh, I think a tremendous amount of uh, uh, you know, frustration in the markets. Uh, there's really no not much direction there seems to be right and uh, if unless you're stock specific, if you are overall in the market, uh, you probably had a really bad uh, uh, week because really nothing much happened. Uh, and if you were really an intraday trader, then the week could have been a very, very profitable one, assuming that you were really, really good at, uh, you know, your analysis and getting in and out of uh, trades. Um, Okay, so these are the notes from the last week, and uh, what we had said last week is that uh, CNX Auto bullish divergence, BAC Capital Goods weak, FMCG good support, maybe a good bounce, Realty good bounce, Metals good support, multi week, and uh, an MACD crossover, perhaps an investment buy, and uh, PSU banks don't touch them. Banks and power some weak bounces and we had some specific uh, buy recommendations on quite a few stocks Which was a very surprising thing last week given the week before how the market had really fallen We think about Bajaj Auto, Toto Motors we said buy, HUL buy, ITC maybe a buy, ONGC was just a buy 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 And Reliance Industries uh, maybe a good multi-year investment opportunity at 800 to 850 um, A lot of banks were short uh, Kotak Bank, we said wait for a break route or breakdown. Tata Steel buy, Hindalco buy, NMDCs uh, uh, buy, Jindal could be, but high event risk. Cement, we said uh, wait and watch LNT potential short. And there was a mega oversold on Sipla, Lupin, and possible Sun Pharma long. All right, so I'm just going to keep this, and uh, those of you who are regular subscribers would have received this on my other screen while we go through this so that we refer uh, to that and see how we did this week and uh, this coming to this week so multi hundred point volatility on the nifty um, you have Modi in China right uh, and then uh, there is Greece paying IMF from its IMF reserves Right, um, and then apart from that, I'm not sure there was any particularly big news. At least I'm not aware of anything. Uh, I must put a disclaimer here that I'm not reading newspapers much, though. So there's quite a there's a very good possibility that I've missed some, you know, news or events. Uh, so mostly just looking at charts. So if there's anything, you know, please sound out, put it on the chat box, or unmute yourself and. Uh, now let me know and we can uh, discuss that too right okay so that's uh, the overall thing uh, that's a short quick review I'll push this away to the other screen and then uh, let's come to the 
nifty so what we have here is uh, on the nifty you can see that it's really been dancing off that 200 day moving average and we've had some really volatile days so you can see this day um, after going up on Monday big fall on Tuesday uh, Wednesday you know deciding what to do Thursday another long low shadow and then uh, we have Friday here so overall it's a very undecided market the 200 day moving average obviously uh, uh, providing a lot of drama around which it, the markets playing around you have two three days of good low shadows so potential bear uh, sorry bulls sitting there buying off the market around that 8000 8100 and we perhaps have a sort of ascending triangle in the making and uh, well the market could easily go another week doing nothing before we uh, decide to break out of those boundaries so we'll just have to wait and watch as I'm remembering there were some rumors about uh, interest rate cuts by RBI if not now by the 2nd of June so we are about three four weeks away from that uh, I just want to point out that you know if RBI even cuts the rates uh, some of of course it will it probably will be criticized for being a bit behind the curve and a bit late but um, even if the rates are cut I really don't think it's going to make that some sort of a substantial difference to the markets fundamentally things haven't really you know uh, been strong uh, earnings are not really up to the mark we've got um, now varied uh, news about the monsoons earlier it was like subpar now there's some talk about average monsoons or even a little bit more than average by SkyMet um, but all that really fundamentally doesn't change the fact I think overall that there's now questions about the government's uh, uh, lack of progress on the ground talk 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 and the other thing is also about uh, um, um, hmm, the mat fears right so the mat thing has uh, definitely not gone away gone away and the mat fears are still very much there right so these are all the things which are there on the market and that's uh, these are things we need to uh, you know be clear about okay so uh, yeah so this is the nifty uh, nothing uh, I think more a wait and watch uh, situation on the nifty Uh, but even if it goes up then around 8500 uh, very very significant um, resistances so uh, 100 150 points above might actually be a good time to short rather than go long okay uh, so there is some strength on the short term indicators i think if you look at the weekly chart then clearly um, things are weak and uh, really not expecting uh, much of an up move on a weekly basis. If you look at this, it's a little cluttered. I know. Let me just see. I'll just take that, move that away. And you can see that uh, week on week, we've got two weeks of uh, uh, spinning tops, a very undecided market, whatever it wants to do. This could actually, on a on a weekly basis, this is really looking like uh, you know a flag. So a downtrend flag, that too. So. If you go by the downtrend to the flag approach, then we're talking about uh, 8, 8, to, 8 to 600 points, another 600 point fall from let's say 8, 1, so 8, 2. So we're talking about 7, 6 that could uh, happen on the market. So somewhere there is uh, the 100 day, not this, not the 100 day, this is the 100 week exponential moving average, but around 8, 5, 8, 6, you can see here plenty of uh, multi almost three month support there so is the market heading there well too early to say but you can't rule out this downtrend flag and uh, on the weekly chart right so that's interesting let me make a note of that
So Nifty target is potentially 7,600 on the basis of that. So on this, uh, like I said, daily 200 day moving average, big uh, thing around which it's trying to do something. 8485, there's a lot of resistance. Until that breaks, I don't think there's any reason to be going long. Yes, the things like MACD and all the indicators are showing some strength, but ultimately it's price that matters. We all know that. And uh, the price confirmation is, in my opinion, a long way off. Okay. So, having said that, let's look at uh, our sector indices. So, here's auto, and well, auto has gone up. Not sure which of the stocks went up, but uh, last week we did say about autos potentially going up. I showed you in that previous uh, uh, 8th May, and autos have gone up well. Almost from 18,500 18, to 19,000, a 500 point move. That's almost a 3 4% move on the BSC autos, right? And uh, mm, I've also cleared the 50 and 100 day moving average. Quite possible that uh, they could be. All the way here. All right. So around twenty thousand. Let's see. And especially, well, these guys are definitely going to be benefited if the interest rates get cut. So we could expect uh, further up moves uh, if interest. But again, you know, the next RBI meeting is only on second of June. But uh, Raghuram Rajan has uh, surprised the markets already bef twice before, announcing uh, rate cuts uh, uh, completely unexpectedly. So who knows what he might uh, be up to again. Consumer durables, we'll skip that. And uh, capital goods, so we didn't. We said capital goods are weak. And well, nothing's really happened in capital goods uh, this week. As a matter of fact, they've basically come back or they've fallen from where they were last week net-net. Some potential base formation uh, in line with uh, something like what's on the Nifty, but way too early to say uh, buy them uh, on the weekly. Also, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of resistance. Right. Right, so on the weekly we've got oh, perfect doji almost. Right, so this is a pause. Usually, remember on downtrends, uh, dojis and uh, haramis and uh, spinning tops tend to be more of a consolidation pattern than a reversal pattern. So, that's something to keep in mind. FMCG, like mentioned last week, has uh, definitely gone up a little we've got some green candles and really good support at 7650 and if the monsoon is good then well that's going to be definitely something which is uh, a, a positive for fmcg and uh, well healthier candles no doubt about it uh, on fmcg index so that what potentially remains a buy okay uh, so auto up one sec sectors just making notes otherwise I forget then you have uh, healthcare. So healthcare, hmm, interesting. Got a nice uh, good support at a multi-year level at around 16,000, and then again forming a sort of triangle.
okay pretty good one symmetrical triangle and if it uh, actually shouldn't be so high that and once it breaks out then you know it would go up or down you never know so it's better to wait and watch metals hmm. so metals has really been acting crazy you've got these massive red uh, candles last week and again this week gone by but this level of uh, you know 9850 on the metal index seems to be holding so far all your moving averages are sort of bottoming out and uh, definitely there is some strength and very interesting uh, might even go to the extent of saying you know, I was going to say a broadening top but I think I'll leave it at that that's just been too uh, delusionary that will be the level to watch out for plus Right. Alright, so have to see if those levels hold and a break of any either of those levels would indicate a possibly a strong move, very strong consolidation as you can see on the moving averages last two weeks and a really really iffy situation. This is the sort of situation in which it's best to wait and watch. Uh, Metals, healthcare, and uh, might be a good market to do, you know, short strangles. Cap, mm, all right, same as Nifty. The PSUs, so divestment possibly going to pick up. There's some. Some I don't know some two three four companies where the divestment go ahead was given a go ahead some thirteen thousand crores uh, uh, hope to be raised by the government let's see uh, small cap again the same uh, picture just one minute you are looking at the small caps and more or less they have behaved the same way as uh, the rest of the market has so there's nothing much there uh, bank nifty so that's really in a interesting place and i'm wondering whether hmm hold on hold on if you a very interesting pattern here Oops, sorry, it was not supposed to happen. Okay, so that's the downtrend line, and then uh, our best fit basis. I have to put that now. Why this is interesting and actually quite. Uh, Surprising and probably very um, is uh, all right. Wondering whether it's a descending triangle. I was wondering if it's actually a falling wedge, but it's too. Uh, no, it's not. It's not a falling wedge. It's a descending triangle, and uh, pivoting around that 18,000 a lot. Uh, let's make that blue. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and watch how it behaves. It's you know, still above the 200-day moving average. But uh, 50 and 100 day moving averages have gone above, and that is a good place for both support and resistance, which is going on, right? Uh, 
so okay that's the bank nifty just bank nifty again so consolidation i would say uh, more and more stocks giving the same way bsc power well that clearly broke down this week and that head and shoulder though actually there's no uptrend or lower you know downtrend so it's really not a valid head and shoulder top uh, but there's clearly a downtrend from there to there and we'll have to see how that pans out okay all right and then bsc reality Hmm, very unusual symmetrical triangle, pretty pointed and I would say pretty short lived. I mean, short lived in terms of just two and a half, three weeks. Really, it will be interesting to see how this one pans out. Again, this has uh, been a sector which has actually been struggling as far as I, my readings go in the market. Uh, again, an interest rate cut could temporarily, you know, put a boost in this market, but. Uh, actually no hope I, th I think more likely to go down rather than I think uh, go up nothing in the indicators mm -mm. nope no way Sharia that's gone IT so CNX IT in spite of the depreciating rupee this hasn't done much either and uh, it's just cooled off with the rest of the market in the short term showing some support like everybody else but in the longer term charts the weakness in my opinion persists you've got a doji there and uh, well no sign of long term strength in my opinion it's all short term strength but no long term strength then we've got uh, mid caps all right nifty junior Hmm. So Nifty Junior gone all the way to about 19,700 and really maybe some on the daily charts everything is looking you know moderately with some level of support but if you look at the longer term charts there is just really no strength at all so some up move next week also perhaps is possible but uh, after that really nothing cnx energy uh, nothing much and uh, cnx infra nope nothing there cnx pharma Nope, nothing there and there's a window still to be closed consolidating oh pharma infra I'd say infra is actually the down sector pharma consolidating PSU banks, all right. So Bank of Baroda last week, really <clears throat> big surprising move. Uh, some strength there. Uh, like double bottom on PSU banks. And uh, hmm, interesting. Big uh, bullish engulfing. This is very very in interesting. All right. Uh, Uh, weekly PSU banks. All right, so let's see about that. I 
yep that's it so I think if we look at a quick review of this we'll see that uh, up sectors auto FMCG and big bullish engulfing on uh, PSU banks but uh, aside that really nothing uh, much else or down CNG infra capital goods and infra all this consolidation so very interesting that the BNF the bank nifty uh, is showing consolidation but I would say big bullish engulfing on the PSU bank so uh, the two are behaving probably very uh, differently and uh, apart from that our metals healthcare are all showing moving average squeezes and uh, hmm, really not much of a good uh, market in terms of being bullish it's either down or sideways uh, except for these and uh, this is a sort of multi week I would say um, three to four week view in my opinion right <clears throat> so net net I would probably be wanting to be short okay, okay so now let's go back to looking at our stocks and what we want to do is continue the practice of last week where we said we will um, look at sector wise and group everything by sector so let me just put this back on the other screen right so let's start with automobiles and we will start with Bajaj and well Bajaj has not really gone up but the bullish engulfing sorry the bullish divergence on Bajaj Auto has really really played out really well and net net for the last week after doing this big uh, you know very very good uh, three white soldiers before that this very impressive uh, um, white candle the strength is clearly on the upside uh, volumes have increased on the average while right, looking small two days of consolidation and then we are basically back here we've got a tweezer stop there and just above that is a 200 day moving average and once that breaks we should probably be looking at the market uh, clearly going higher in my opinion right so there is uh, where the market is so we just have, I guess must have to wait and see how that goes so um, once it breaks out of about say 2250, I think 2350 is very clearly possible. So the Jaj Auto continues to be a buy. Something uh, uh, I think we said last week. I just look at your notes. Uh, yeah, we did say Bajaj Auto and Tata Motors were buys, and buys Bajaj Auto, especially above 22. 50 right uh, then next target 2350 and then who knows you're 2500 that put a stop loss below 2150 2145 that along should be executed only after 2250 is attained on good volumes then we have hero motors so hero motors uh, has also gone up this week and actually gone up very very impressively as you can see some uh, volumes were, you know, it was, uh, in retrospect you would say this is some sort of an accumulation that happened at 2300 uh, went down with very low volumes in the last part and at this point very convincingly the downtrend would be over um, well, before we make any hasty statements, let's uh, put the line and see. So it is That's the trend line I would put. Uh, would even put it a little extreme. And if I were to just sort of you know, if I put it there, even then it's broken out. I think this is a better one, and that has been broken out. 26.50 is the next uh, big uh, um, 
target to watch out for and uh, so hero what has moved this week and as we saw bajaj had moved uh, you know the week before so this is how sometimes you get clues as to what could happen it's it's again i know it's putting it in the retrospect but um, if a sector starts doing well or is expected to do well then you'll see one after the other stocks that start to perform so this is a good example of that then we have uh, m m so well that's also gone up so we had a breakdown from uh, uh, the symmetrical triangle whose target has clearly not been met uh, and now it has clearly clearly decided to go up the volumes are a little bit of a concern you've not really seen high volumes but uh, I guess optimism is in the air it's come to a very important resistance of 1250-1251 and uh, I would expect that this would get broken out and we could see 1350 on the chart maybe even 1400 so 1350-1400 is quite possible I would say on M and M, right? Okay. Uh, hmm. Nice bullish Marubozu candle this week on M and M, as you can see. Volumes again not really good. Might see a cool off actually for maybe the next week on M and M. But I think it should uh, move up after that. So there's been a considerable uh, consolidation in the last some September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Well, almost nine months. All right, and uh, perhaps now it has decided to move up. Okay. Next is Maruti. So. On Maruti, you can see that uh, it's beginning to look like it wants to go up, and uh, very quickly, very I'm sure next week, 37.50 is going to be re-accomplished, and then who knows, it could go higher. Again, all these remember, interest rate cuts are something that will definitely be a positive for these stocks. However, remember that the overall market is really, really weak and uh, if you're going long on any of these auto stocks, so we're looking at Tata Motors now, so that's clearly consolidating 200 day moving average. Um, we'll have to see what it does, but if you look at uh, all the other stocks and uh, how they have behaved, then there's good reason to believe that this would most probably also go up in my opinion. right? So, hmm, weekly candle, nice uh, hammer formation there. Um, not a really good uh, confirmatory candle today, right? Uh, so. Yeah. All right. So that is Tata Motors, and uh, hmm. so everything in the autos, I would say, is a buy. But like I said, uh, be careful with the overall market being weak. You could go long. Definitely, no question of going short on autos right now. You could go long for perhaps the next week. And of course, a review update. Uh, look at those moving averages or any other resistances on top and get out with a short term trade. In the longer term, things are looking bad. So, unless there's something fundamentally good that happens for autos or the overall market, um, the longs are a high risk long. Okay, so next, coming to cements and cement products, we go to ACC and uh, ACC. You can see it's almost a ditto picture of uh, um, the Nifty almost 200 day moving average just below the above that um, the 50 and 100 day there 
1500 psychological mark 1550 uh, life level there right and uh, it's in a it's just below a good resistance zone so that is definitely something to think about uh, the side and shoulder uh, almost reached the target I would say um, 1760 to 1520 uh, so that is 200 so may not have actually reached the perfect target but uh, I think you know one would have technically known that 1420 was a support zone that was definitely a good short trade no longer valid and even if the target does come that's that's a different issue so best best to wait and watch till it breaks out about 1550 on the long side and if it does actually go up to 1550 it might actually be a good shot rather than a good long nothing on the chart saw the indicators being very optimistic uh, showing any you know strength and the volumes have really petered out so the market is really not sure so let's you know let's not poke our head where it doesn't belong uh, so this is the Ambuja cement and same thing as uh, ACC so we've got a symmetrical triangle uh, that's the one and Hmm. Right. Uh, looks like we're going to get a lot of tight symmetrical triangles. This could also have a head and shoulder. Remember the moving average is above that and keep this uh, neckline in mind. In the future it could offer a lot of resistance. Right. So that is uh, Ambuja cement. And then uh, we've got Rasim. So again it's, it's it's just stay away from that look at that 200 day moving average and how it is just you know deciding what to do low volumes um, you could sell you know calls and puts three four strike prices away given that we are coming to expiry in next week right so if it continues we've got exactly two weeks from expiry so it could be a good time to start thinking about writing uh, Strangles in case the market doesn't decide what it wants to do in the next two weeks, right? Okay, so That's something that we'll have to actually sort of if you don't do that You've got to review the markets on a literally daily basis Right, so after Grassim we look at uh, Ultratech Hmm, this is definitely uh, More positive last week was really really up uh, this week uh, one down but uh, again really poor volumes uh, wondering what's going on so here at 2800 2820 we've got significant resistance and until and unless that breaks out we are in a stop you could actually buy the 2800 call on this right so this is the only one which is looking like it could give you some substantial profit on a up move but uh, other than that uh, uh, really not much else right so 3000 going to be a psychological mark that uh, one can keep in mind uh, 200 rupees upside distinctly possible right this is actually like a pennant or a flag right so I will put that on uh, The notes ultra tech flag target is just 200. So I would say 3000 is quite possibly the target. You could go long 
on ultra tech and put a stop loss actually anywhere between 2743 and a better one will be around 2688 which is quite a bit down and i think the best way to do this is to buy the 2800 call right buy 2800 call okay so that's done with uh, autos and then sorry cements let's move on to uh, the group is dlf uh, dlf is not the lnt so lnt hmm, interesting look at those trend lines right or rather uh, yeah a trend line broke down through it last week uh, tried to move up again got smashed monday tried to move up tuesday got smashed down moving up again the 200 day moving average is just there exactly where it is the volume is really not doing much and on a weekly basis this is definitely showing weakness right so hmm. lnt we've got a triangle here and if it breaks down then uh, looks like it's going to go to 1500 in my opinion that that's just my view really good resistance is all the way and if it goes to 1620 or something should be shorted in my opinion and uh, at, uh, well the risk of being wrong is always there but i am going to put this as short okay 1500 is target okay so that is uh, lnt and then uh, we move on to consumer goods and fmcg group in uh, the nifty so we look at asian paints wow what a move on thursday right and on good volumes so see how 200 day moving average excellent support up move on good volumes 800 broken out or just sort of pause there today went up and down on that uh would say buy asian paints then Right, so you can see also the local the consolidation that happened from February to April. Uh, slightly high volume breakdown. Looks like it didn't sustain too well. And then right, so it's come there. And 850. There is a clear possibility could go along with the stop loss below 774, 772, and 850 is the target to watch out for for Asian paints. Okay, so then in this time Unilever, we've got a support at 828, just sitting there. Hmm. This is definitely not showing much strength in my opinion. That's where they are. So A28 downtrend watch good shorting candidate if it goes to about 860 865 and definitely once it breaks 828 825 and at least till 814 and then quite possibly all the way down till 880 so that's on my short list which you will okay so wait for the bounce or another way to execute this will be and at the money 850 put right by the 850 put on hul and then just uh, leave that all right then we come to itc oops and on itc well you can see the double bottom almost a tweezers bottom 
going sideways until that happens really nothing much to say about it so just wait and watch right so that is itc either break above 340 actually 350 that's when you can you know aggressively go long or go long and not worry about it but any up or down move right now of 10-15 rupees is fraught with danger what you could do actually is look at I think writing the um, 840 call and the 810 put I would say that would be the thing to do for ITC All right okay then we're coming to energy we'll start with BPCL Right, so BPCL hmm, gone up. So seven eighty is the target. Big uh, hammer midweek. And if 780 breaks, then we can definitely see it going up. Right. Mm, 720 good support, and 1780 breaks, and 800, 810, 820 is a possible target. Right. Uh, yeah. Hmm. BCL downtrend line might have been broken. Uh, yep, it has. Right, so that downtrend line on BPCL is definitely gone. All right, so BPCL potential buy once it crosses 780, 785, then uh, definitely along with the stop loss below 750. And first target 820. So I'm adding that to my list. Then we've got uh, Kane. So we said Kane last week was perhaps a buy. I think. Did we say that? Because uh, crude oil prices. But uh, did we have any mention on Kane? One sec. Not. Okay, we have met ONGC. Alright. Hmm. So Kane has uh, come to 200 rupees and still, okay, volumes have come down. But you know what? Just take at least this, buy the 200 put on Kane. Uh, I think that's, that's just something that uh, you could look at doing, right? And if you make money, you would make quite a lot of money. Right, two hundred put. It's definitely not looking like it's going to stop there. And if two hundred goes, then who knows? Even one fifty, but in steps of five or ten rupees, is quite possible. Right. Right, so that is a distinct possibility that it might break down below 200 and if it does that then who knows where the next stop is. It's like once it broke 250, see how swiftly it fell down to about 230, did a bounce, got the trend line and then beaten down again. Right, so Kane 200 put, target is open, stop loss if you need it is maybe around around 208 or above uh, otherwise heading down okay then uh, gale hmm what happened some news and then big uh, fallback very interesting 
uh, this big up move uh, yesterday. I wonder what the big uh, shadow on top was. That's really, really interesting. Right. Uh, all the way to 400 and then beaten back again to 385. 410 is the next target. Could definitely be there. And if we look at this, we have the weekly chart. Massive double top. Hmm. If you look at this, then looks like uh, we headed lower, and the really really good support is only around 350, 36, 340 mark. Until then, not. Uh, much may happen and it will be really interesting to see what happens thereafter right so that is uh, gain for you then we look at NTPC and well that's really gotten beaten down and this week has really been down went sideways and the big issue was the breakdown from here so last week uh, or this week it attempted to go back there 145 and if you knew these levels what a sweet profit you would have had on a shot right? that's not a small resistance that's a multi-year resistance that it had as you can see all the way from 2006 so almost nine years and uh, well absolutely no ability to hold that and I looks like I would say looking at the way the red candles are looking at the way the volumes are there's really no hope on this and even though today is actually a low volume day if 130 breaks 133 breaks then easily 130 or lower is definitely possible right so that is uh, NTPC then you have ONGC we said buy last week let's see if you were right or wrong and well, hmm, neither right, right or wrong, I would say. Uh, so, in spite of uh, this big fall last week, and this is where we were, this is what happened this week. Uh, came down, going up on low volumes. MACD is like wanting to cross over to the positive side, so that is something to keep in mind. It's not going to go up in a hurry, but it's unlikely that this is going to be beaten down. Uh, much more in my opinion so ONGC buy but subject to the overall market risk which is there on its own it will probably do well really good stop loss below 296 you could also think about buying a 310 or whatever at the money call or a 300 call or you know to a little easier you could even look at a bullish spread I think um, horizontal spread Short this month's uh, 330, 340, 350 call and go long on the same strike price next month, right? So that will be a horizontal bullish spread on ONGC. Okay. Uh, okay. And then we've got uh, power grid. So, well, sitting on the 200 day moving average until that uh, gets decided. We don't decide anything. Volumes are uh, uh, oof, today's big volumes. Actually, the last two weeks has been. Uh, uh, good volumes and uh, tough to say what's going to go happen here. It will go to 145 and it is going to have a lot of resistance at that level. And if it breaks 140, then it's definitely headed down. I think you could look at buying the 140 put on power grid, is my opinion. Set the money oh, 140 put on power grid. 
okay so that is uh, power grid and then we look at reliance hmm so it's just going sideways 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 and it's not probably going to do much on that uh, so we'll just have to wait and watch as to what happens on reliance lots of support on the on a down and lots of resistances on top uh, company could be getting out of uh, you know a sort of no performance multi-year sort of thing and uh, you can see from 20, 2009 to now really net net uh, though it swung up and down really hasn't done much and definitely has been a, one of the biggest laggards in the market uh, and it's a question of whether it breaks 900 or not and 900 910 and if it goes below 830 840 right so till it does that stay away could think of writing a strangle for reliance right. short strangles some more I think I'd mentioned on stock short strangles but I'm forgetting what those were then we have Tata power and in that hmm interesting that's come to a multi year I think downtrend line yep from 2010 wondering what will do that whether it's going to break or not and then we've got another downtrend line there just to keep in mind for the future okay so we'll have to see how this behaves but I think it's going to test 79 uh, 70 69 sorry uh, without that so any opportunity you get that a power should be used to short very poor volumes in the last uh, one week consolidation but most likely to go down rather than up. okay done so we're done with energy nothing really looking good there we now come to let's do IT so IT HCL tech so we've got uh, our rupee depreciating one would think that uh, it's doing IT should do well but you can see the volumes in HCL tech are not really good and again stuck between 950 on the top and 850 on the bottom is my opinion it uh, no, I thought there was a gap there. No, there's no gap. So 850 on top, sorry, 850 on the bottom, 950 on the top, and uh, I think it's going to break 800 and sorry, 900. And once 900 breaks, then a quick fall to 860 is uh, definitely on the cards, right? So 900 to 860, don't rule that out. Okay. uh yeah so that's it real tech for us and i'm betting that it's going to go down so you could buy the 900 put on hcl tech okay mm, target 850 stop loss there's no stop loss on this just buy the 900 put in fee so another bonus given going sideways between 1940 and 2000 for uh, like two three weeks now the uh, question is what does it do next i think looks like it might fall to 1850 1800 1850 is okay where i would look at it as you can see, we've got spinning tops on uh, Infi. Sorry, Doji's on Infi for two weeks. So, a lot of indecision going on. Tough to say what is going to happen. But clearly, 2000 and then 2020 is going to be resistances. You would, 
if you can write the 2100 or 2050 put i think you should write it as a matter of fact you could even buy the 1950 put and see how that might perform till it decides one way or the other really nothing much to say so that is in fee then we do tcs so if you look at tcs well that's also going sideways 2500 is the level to basically watch and once that you know decides what it wants to do then we are going to see it either go up or down right so about 2550 or below 2500 it will go to 2450 so again it's just a wait and watch game on IT Tech Mahindra mm, not doing much 600 to 630 right Mm. Again, it's just a wait and watch. Six hundred to six thirty. <sighs> Little tiring and boring, no? Uh, same sideways. This is well, what what the market also does, right? And you just have to live with it and take it one day, one week at a time, one month at a time. And then suddenly it will start to move and you've got to be prepared for that move as and when that happens. So that is uh, Tech Mahindra for us. And then so downtrend becoming a side trend, that's for sure. Just checking. Alright, so I think IT more or less no opinion. And if there is any, then it is uh, a negative bias with uh, short strangles also that you can look at. Right next, we are looking at metals, and if we look at metals, we can start with not really uh, coal India, not really the. It's not a metal, of course, but it's grouped with that raw materials and all. Mm. Just wondering whether this one is ready for a move. Could be, right? Uh, it's definitely begin to consolidate. And what we have is a one and a half month, I would say. Possible, very vague, but still triangle that's going on mm -hmm. that could go on for a very long time another uh, two months who knows and uh, good opportunity to be writing you know, out of the money options on this, I think, on Coal India. There was some talk about the PMO's office uh, asking that the next lot of uh, coal block allocation should be done quickly. So I don't know how that is uh, moving, but anyhow, that is something to keep in mind. So that's Coal India, and then we've got uh, Indalco. So last week we had said buy Hindalco and Tata Steel. Right, Hindalco well, hasn't really played out, and uh, it's not a defense or anything. It's going to you know, be patient. Also, we said a lot of patience is going to be required because uh, you need all these levels to actually break. Uh, the resistance is moving averages, and a good buy would probably be only above 150. Right, so it moved up and then hasn't really been able to uh, effectively stay strong okay uh, so we're going to have to see about that let's see if it goes to 150 just, just be patient I think buying the by writing the 130 put and the 150 call for this month could definitely make you money on Hindalco
right so that is something to uh, look at okay then we have jindal steel and jindal steel triple bottom at around that 128 130 level and uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, the high risk buy, I mean, you know, none of the, let's say the long term moving averages are pointing up as they should in a bullish market. They are not, of course, not in a bullish market. Uh, so there is a good risk, I think, of uh, Jindal Steel perhaps even making 100. And if that happens, then. Uh, we're looking at 72 uh, I would seriously look at you know uh, keeping I think it was also Jindal uh, Naveen Jindal was summoned for that coal scam or something I would put an SLTP sell order short order on Jindal below 124 and if it breaks above 145 then you would buy it below 124 you would uh, definitely short it and we'll have to review at that time but it could easily go to uh, the first target 107 and then even 100 and that's going to be a lot of money All right so jindal uh, strong shot wrong way down okay then we have nmdc Hmm. Hmm. So, very good symmetrical triangle on an MDC. Let's see what the volumes look like. Okay, clearly volumes have been decreasing overall, but last week has been a little erratic. And then if you look on weekly, hmm, looks like it could be a buy. It will test your patience, that's for sure. But yes, it would definitely be a buy that you want to keep in mind. NMDC. Hmm. So Jindal short, but an MDC could be a buy. Uh, let's put that. Hmm. So then we've got SSLT. What happened? No, oh, it's been moved by the software somewhere else. Okay, I'm going to skip that. And then Tata Steel, on which we said buy last week, and hasn't really turned out uh, that well. Big fall on Tuesday. Monday was okay. Tuesday. But note one thing on Tata Steel for if you're a long-term investor. Uh, so Tata Steel, we did say if you look at the notes of the last month or last week rather, long term, it's uh, come out. The MACD has come out from almost a 9-10 month uh, negative phase has been able to cross back up and there is a you know positive uh, MACD crossover on uh, Tata Steel on the weekly chart so from a long long term perspective this is something to keep in mind uh, of course things can change there is absolutely no doubt about that is that uh, Hmm. You could, you know, go long on NMDC, sorry, on uh, on uh, Tata Steel and sell the 400 call for now. It's almost guaranteed to make money. You also have the 200 day moving average right there. So it's very unlikely that uh, it's going to break out of that. But if it does go up from about 350 to 400, yeah, 
so I'm just going to put that on Tata Steel multi month by with sell okay so this is metals done so we've got a potential big shot on Jindal steel we've got a good long multi-month potentially on Tata steel and Hindalco we better wait and watch and do a short strangle interesting that on three different stocks in the same index we've got uh, very different views right wow okay then let's look at uh, Pharma. So in Pharma, we come to Sipla. So healthcare was showing some bullishness, so clearly that's bounced back up. And we've got uh, move up, but as you can see, volumes are not really good. I would say if it goes to 710, good time to short. Very good stop loss above 714, and 670 would be the target. Then, uh, Dr ready that's also gone up massive volume something here some news might have been uh, fundamental or something gone up to 7600 and then has uh, possibly going up to i would say 7550 whatever that news is better to check it out uh, volumes are definitely higher average that because of that and a stop loss on that would be below 34 30 right so that is dr reddy lupin hmm, so broke down from uh, 1690 you can see how nicely this broke down with the gap the gap was closed today and it will most probably go down after this right so some high volume activity on this and i would say a move down till 1550 cannot be ruled out uh, Stop loss 1726, 1730, and I think first target is 18, sorry, 1600, and then 1550, right, would be the Lupin target, and then finally Sun Pharma. What did we say on Lupin last week? One sec. Oh, shots. Lupin. Good shot again. Pharma dividing itself into different uh, groups. So Sun Pharma sitting on a very important support line, multi uh, sorry, a former life high of 920 and 850 is possibly what it wants to do next. I would say Sun Pharma is also a shot. So Dr. Reddy's was the long, right? But again, not uh, very convincing in my opinion. Some volume there. Yeah, but uh, I wouldn't go after that. So, both Lupin and Sun Pharma, in my opinion, are shots. And Sun Pharma, 920. So, buy the 920 or at the money put for this month is I think what I would say and if it doesn't work this month then I still carry over that position perhaps to the next month alternatively you could go short on the futures and sell the 950 960 call right um, so actually that's a it's not a double shot it is both the negative opinions of the market so just remember that selling that higher call does not uh, give you uh, a protection right Okay, so that is uh, Sun Pharma. We look at Bharti, only telecom stock. All right, so that went to 400 and then came back. It's been doing that for quite a long time. I don't know what's happened to that Reliance Geo thing. Suddenly, at least I'm not reading the papers. If anybody has an update, then please do update and inform. So, Bharti, in my opinion, seems to be stuck if it can break 400 then cool but if not then we'll have to wait and watch again triangle in play right but some really wild moves 
so that is one level to watch out for and this is the other level to watch out for Alright, so that is Bharti HL and the volumes. Very erratic. The last few months, suddenly big work move. Looks like overall from an investment perspective, you could be, you should be looking at buying it and nothing else. But from a trading perspective, let's do wait for the breakout or breakdown. Okay, so that is uh, Bharti and the last group that we have not covered is our financial stocks. We shall start with uh, Axis Bank. So we'll try and look at the private and the public sector separately. So Axis Bank consolidating 555 is the level to watch out for. It's been doing that March, April, May until it decides to you know do one thing or the other it's just better to stay away from that i would perhaps say that uh, still overall things are looking negative and it will take a lot of conviction but again the interest rate cut is something to keep at the back of the mind and uh, If we do that, so that is Axis Bank and uh, five fifty breakout or breakdown could easily move it by what 60 bucks so yeah the 600 or 500 well you, you know what you could do you could buy the 550 strangle sorry straddle right so on axis bank uh, long straddle Access Bank 550. All right, and then let's do HDFC. So that's again 1250. Very interesting. Let's come back to that rounding top uh, trend line. Let's come back to that rounding top resistance. And it's done that on poor volumes. And on the weekly chart, this is actually still looking quite weak, right? So, apart from this event risk of uh, uh, the event risk of uh, what do you say? Hmm. The interest rate cut you've got uh, I would have said short it if that event risk was not there so I think maybe just safer to stay away from it and uh, instead maybe do the 1250 straddle on HDFC because of the event risk otherwise I more think it's going to go down rather than Go up, but again, stuck between 12.50 and 11.50, so it's a tough call. You could, if you are a more high risk trader, go short on it right now with a stop loss at 12.61 and first target 11.80 and then 11.50. Right, so that's HDFC, HDFC Bank. So that's come to downtrend line. Okay, so we are just there. Mm. Nope, no 
more strength on the weekly charts as you can see and that's been the theme right all through the week actually So this is thousand is a good resistance thousand thousand ten. You could uh, mm, let's say go short on it again to nine seventy as a target. Stop loss would be around thousand ten thousand twelve. Again, the event risk is what is the big question. Okay. Then we have uh, IDFC not really a bank and like I said use the opportunity for it to go down to keep accumulating the stock for the IDSC bank demerger that would happen uh, you know anytime in the next many months and that would be something to make money out of so that is IDFC uh, 155 170 and then 155 are the two levels to watch out Far. All right. Okay. Mm, not giving any trading calls on IDFC uh, because of a demerge at some point. Indusind Bank started to go up, and well, the volumes are beginning to look a little good. Mm, Eight hundred is the support that you have to look for and 730 is the next target that could happen right so eight fifty would support the resistance zone as you can see in the past so in this in bank going through that and breaking through that at 875 is a little tough so in the overall given the market uh, remember the flag downtrend weekly flag on nifty the it nifty going down whether the banks going down is is going to be you know it can happen of course but uh, uh, a bit of a problem remember that uh, rbi report about increased uh, non performing assets in banks so that's something to you know keep in mind and uh, hmm. okay. Uh, again, without the event risk, I would have gladly said short it. But uh, you could get temporary bounces on all these. I think uh, if you know interest rate risk cut happens but otherwise uh, otherwise you know what uh, just a new thought in case interest rate is held on 2nd of june so we are talking too early but we uh, have rbi meet on 2nd of june nothing happens then uh, it will be a big disappointment to the market i think and then the banks could really really fall so that kotak going sideways as you can see it's been going sideways for quite some time rectangle so best to sell the I think 1250 or 1300 put and the 1450 call till the breakout happens. Don't see that happening anytime soon, according to me. So it's it's had a massive run up in the last uh, many months. So after breaking out of uh, its life high at around uh, 670, it's all almost doubled in a matter of two years. You know, that is fantastic, all right? Okay. So that is the all right. So that's it as far as uh, public sector banks are concerned. Sorry, private sector banks are concerned. Let's look at the private public sector banks now. State Bank of India. Whoa, what a move! What a move! What a move! Uh, and again, I would say not great volumes, but still the. Pattern on the scandals is impressive and definitely the bearishness on the indicators weekly and on the candles weekly is not at the same magnitude as it was for private sector banks and clearly this one has broken the downtrend line 
uh, is definitely a buy. Okay, uh, good stop loss below 280. First target is 295, and once that breaks, then 305, and then 315. So uh, banks clearly, uh, PSU banks, at least the big one. Let's look at uh, PNB. Hmm, so PNB is struggling. Uh, came to that level. See how those almost perfect tweezer bottoms uh, are holding, and then from here uh, it could go up uh, quite a lot. Who knows? And 160, 170 are the next targets on the Punjab National Bank. Right. So that is something to keep in mind. Okay. So there's a stop loss below 138. I would say uh, first target 160, big target 170, big resistance 170, and the next view would be about 175. So really not uh, taken off yet, but uh, and then there's a big fall here. Um, so generally, just going with the trend of how PSU banks are doing, right? Okay. Then we have uh, Bank of Baroda. And whoo, so this was the big move on Monday. A really, really a big surprise on massive volumes. Not sure what happened, uh, but just shot up and then it's just been consolidating. So, wouldn't call this a flag, but then it's as good as that. And you know, don't be surprised uh, if not next week, the week after we just move. Remember the Bajaj Auto thing, just big move, one week consolidation and moved again. This could just behave just like that. 180 would be the target I would be watching for and a stop loss below 154 so quite a bit of volatility especially if you're doing this on the future side you just have to live with that much bigger mark to market stuff have you missed anything in this in quota pnb okay yeah so that's it so one thing we missed is bhel and uh, Capital goods and stuff like that. So BHEL consolidating, really not much, nothing to do. Uh, so uh, just have to wait and watch. Okay, the big uh, resistance of BHEL around 240, 245. So that will be the only thing to be a little concerned about. Just have to see. All right. Okay. So that's it. Uh, any questions, Surya, Kundu? And later on, those who watch it, watch the recording, can send in anything. But I think uh, I might have missed some of the new ones. In uh, there are some changes made to the Nifty. All right. So adding idea to the discussion, uh, so that's clearly done well, I made a life fi in April this year, let me just do weekly. So big up move on volumes on idea of consolidation, uh, cool off that's happened in the last few weeks, remember this is a weekly chart. Uh, as you can see, a life in 2013 came back, consolidated a lot around the previous life of 2007, almost a one year consolidation, and then it has moved again. So it's itching to, I think, uh, move up. At least I've been getting a lot of calls of my idea to shift to them. I haven't done anything so far. Uh, so, first of all, we need a new line here. Right, so that is uh, a move from 175 to 160, sorry, 200 to 175 with support at 165. Long term investors should look at you know, picking up idea in my opinion. Some bad news that happened late April, some consolidation going on and uh, well, it's still looking healthy for the multi-week time period. Uh, 
good stop loss is unfortunately quite low at around 145 in case it comes to around 150 155 it definitely be a good time to buy idea first target 190 185 190 then 200 and once this time it stays above 200 i think it will go much much higher okay so that is uh, here uh, this should actually just be two days yeah okay this is a new vedanta uh, I have to add the historical data to this so i'll do that by next week surya has a request for aisha motors well it's been going up oh 18700 what a fantastic run up 2009 it was 440 now it is not just 10 times it is what 30 times higher uh, looks like 20,000 next at the very least is what you're looking at on Aisha Motors nothing less than that okay so remember this is for Surya Aisha was brought to our attention by Sumanth so I don't know if you've invested hope you're sharing some of your profits with him Right, so cool. This is good. Next target is twenty thousand, and then we'll review, and then who knows? It's probably going much higher. And if you look at the volume, it's just been terrific. Uh, wow, today is this week's super volume. No question of it that it is headed to much higher levels, right? So well, that's it on Aisha clearly 20,000 after that we will review right I stop like this you never know and keep going up keep going up keep going up no end to where it can land up okay done anything else maybe no there was some uh, uh, Aditya, where is this? How come it's not here? Hmm. This is strange. What is the code for it? That merger between Aditya Billa Retail versus Aditya a Future Retail and uh, that was a big move uh, last week. This week is clearly a consolidation, right? Uh, I would definitely say buy Aditya Billa on any dip that happens. At this point, it's headed to 2000. Uh, the only problem with any long positions right now is the big weakness in the overall nifty right so that's the only risk uh, stop loss rate is below 1775 1778 wherever tough to put one exact number and uh, next is 2000 uh, is, is what i would uh, expect it to achieve there is i think one big uh, gap here yep i think so oh yes big window so this is something to watch out for this window here so as and when if and when not if it will close this gap that's the time to buy it at around uh, say 1600 1575 uh, one day that window is very likely to be closed right so that would be the view on aditya billa nubo done anything else okay so I think we've come to the end thank you for your participation let's uh, so the recording should be up uh, by lunchtime tomorrow we'll send out the notes uh, in the meantime for you to have a review and uh, wishing you all the best so just remember I think the big issue really is uh, um, the weekly you know um, downtrend flag on the nifty that's the thing that uh, i would uh, 
just to not forget at all uh, because if that uh, does go down then we all long positions are high risk uh, but all the short positions would be very very quick very very fast money right okay so yep i think uh, banks is the only one it sort of uh, uh, PSU banks, uh, SBI, VOB, and shorts. TFC hmm. is TFC bank. Uh, in this end, but event risk of RBI. That's right. All right. So good. So this will be sent out with the recording by tomorrow. Have a great weekend and have a great week after this. Right? Thank you and catch you next week. Bye.